What's going on everybody? Welcome back to some more My Hero Academia Ultra Impact and today we have another villain being revealed and it is time for the boy himself, Tomura Shigaraki. He is finally revealed for My Hero Academia Ultra Impact. So if you guys are hyped for Shigaraki to be coming to Ultra Impact, make sure to drop a like here on today's video. Also, we do know his full kit and details because he was a part of the closed beta test. So we're gonna go over all of that here in today's video. But before we go ahead and get started though, make sure you guys go down there, click that red subscribe button if you haven't already to join the heroes and villains community here on Hydros Impact. Also click that bell to turn on all notifications that way you don't miss out on any future videos, whether it be gameplays, guides, summons, everything gonna be your best one-stop shop for My Hero Academia Ultra Impact, as well as some other My Hero content coming in the future as well. But Today, we have Tomura Shigaraki being revealed for Ultra Impact, so let's go ahead and go over what his tweet says, and then we'll go over to the wiki where I do have his information, and again, all the information and all the wiki links and stuff like that for him can be found in the description down below. So we're gonna go over his tweet real quick, and then we'll move over to the wiki. So, Death Pattern Kasuke, or, you know, Tomura Shigaraki is his name, obviously. Quirk is Collapse or Decay, it's very bad Google Translate. Uh, but when the opponent of the battle is a professional hero, the collapse power or decay power of vacuum, de of vacuum decay or vacuum collapse, whichever you want to call it, I guess, is greatly improved. So this is describing his plus ultra attack, and we're going to go over his plus ultra attack here in a minute and actually see what his plus ultra attack actually looks like as well. But this right here is describing it. So it basically is saying when your opponent is a professional hero, so it only is going to affect professional heroes, the power increases. So you get a power boost whenever you're facing a hero, right? So that's basically what that's meaning. Uh, and then also we have his artwork, which is artwork looks super, super awesome. This is actually, they're showing off his unawakened art, which is awakened art looks sick as well but this is his unawakened or this is what you'll get when you do summon the character when you do pull him on a banner and then obviously to get his awakened art you have to then complete page three of the ability boost system which is easy to do enough but all you have to do is complete the page three fully and then you get his awakened art so this is his uh his art right here and then also this screenshot you can tell is basically his plus this is actually a screenshot of his plus ultra attack animation uh again Whenever they do these reveals, I try to mention this in every video just in case someone misses it, but whenever they do these reveals and they tweet out this image for the character, uh, the character usually is pretty easy to determine if it is a UR character or not uh, based off of this little screenshot that they include in the tweet, right? So this screenshot, it looks like a very, very, you know, cool animation. It most likely is going to be a UR whenever they do SR animations or SR screenshots. It's usually just the character model chilling in like a battle arena and stuff like that. So. Uh, whenever it shows off an attack like this, like a plus ultra or something, it most likely is a UR, which Shigaraki is a UR t uh, character rarity. And he also is a purple typing, which I guess uh, roughly translated is destruction type, which makes sense, I guess, because he, he is <laughs> decay, right? So it makes sense being destruction, but he is a purple type and he is also a UR rarity. So let's go ahead and hand on over to the wiki and see what he does. So endless malice Tomura Shigaraki, again, you are rarity purple typing max level 80 and his base stats. We, I will update this once we do see his stats in the game. And once I get his base level one stats, once his max level and max ability boost and stuff like that. So I will update these once the game comes out and I'm able to actually obviously see them. Right. So I will update that and keep you and keep an eye on it when the game does come out, this will change. Uh, and here's his information right here. So vacuum collapse, as I mentioned, uh, this tweet here, this part is mentioning his plus ultra attack animation. And it is, Vacuum collapse, 600% damage to a single enemy, and then you get a 20% power boost if the enemy is a professional hero. So definitely playing to the villain card here because I assume there will be, I couldn't tell if there was a tag system in the game. I had to go back and look, but I don't, I, I don't think it, the game just knows, right? It just classifies them as heroes or villains. I guess it's pretty obvious if it's a hero or villain at this point, but I don't know if there's like a tagging system that the game has. I didn't actually notice one or see one when I played the beta, so I don't know. But either way, it's pretty easy to determine if a character is a professional hero, right? So it really shouldn't be too hard. Uh, but yeah, so 20% more power if the enemy is a professional hero. So if you're going against like All Might, Endeavor, and all that kind of stuff, right? I don't know actually if Deku would be classified as a pro hero. He actually probably wouldn't be. So this might not work against someone like Deku or Bakugo or Ochako. It would make sense. Again, that would require testing. I did not actually get to pull him in the beta, so I didn't actually get to test him. So when he does release in game, I will definitely test this out to see if this 20% boost does happen 
when you're going against like someone like Deku, my I, my thought is no, it doesn't. It's actually when it's really a pro hero like All Might, Endeavor, Midnight, stuff like that, right? So that's my thought on it. I believe that's how it would work. Again, this is just roughly translated from Japanese. So bear with me if something is, you know, poorly worded on my part. This is just, again, rough translating. It should be fairly accurate, I guess I should say. But either way, 20% more power if the enemy is a professional hero. So if you're build building a villain team, he definitely is going to be very good for your team just based off of this plus ultra attack. Because if there are stuff like the USJ, where there's a lot of pro hero like enemies that you're going to be facing, definitely going to want him on your team, especially if you're wanting to build a full villain team. Because if you're doing this, then man, you're going to get that power boost like pretty much every time you get that plus ultra attack, which is going to be really good. So speaking of his plus ultra, let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like, because I really like Tomaras. His looks awesome in game. So let's take a look. all right man dude his plus ultra attack animation looks super super amazing man i i really love his plus ultra let me see can i get it again get one more time more time i see it there we go like just the plus ultra attack animation looks super cool man like i love it like the decay like yeah so obviously he's a ur let me see here let's actually kind of brief back here so he is a ur character right so he does have animated arts which that animated art looks pretty sick too not gonna lie uh, that's his unawakened animated art oh no that might be his awakened i can't tell i have to look at it in a second but yeah this this plus ultra man looks super super sick man i love I love the UR animations of this game. It just looks so good. Aside from the chibi characters, like it doesn't matter to me, but their attack, the attacks just look so beautiful, man. It looks so awesome. So that was his awakened arts. So this is kind of what his awakened arts going to look like. Again, I'll post better version of these once the, uh, once the game does come out and I can put the animated versions here as well. So these will be updated. Just, you know, stay tuned for that. And I will post the plus ultra animation on its page too. Once this video is live on YouTube, but yeah, so we do have his unawakened art and his awakened. Again, this Twitter is revealing his unawakened art, which is right here. And then you have his awakened art being this one right here, which looks super sick as well. Oh man, I love the arts in this game, man. It looks so good. So we have an action skill called collapse, which is kind of the same thing, I guess, as the plus ultra, but it's uh, a little bit uh, different, right? So 325% damage to one enemy. If the enemy is a professional hero, you have a medium chance of giving a fear state, which I don't know what fear state technically means. I guess a fear state would be like the enemy has a chance to where the fear, like, I guess it's like a, like an affliction to where if the fear state kicks in, then they can't attack or they can't use in a skill. Right. So again, it takes a little bit of testing. I got to see what it actually does in game and kind of, you know, play around with it and see how it goes. But I assume the way fear works is that it inflicts the status on a character, which has a medium chance on this collapse ability so medium chance, I assume maybe like 35, 40% chance to do it. And then the fear itself is basically has a chance of an enemy being like paralyzed with fear. You know, you're kind of like, oh, I can't do anything. Right. So probably in a sense of like that to where you can't attack. And then we have necrosis, which is his second action skill, which is 325% damage to one enemy. If the enemy is a professional hero, reduce power by 15% for three turns. And then the cooldown of that is four turns. And the cooldown of the other one is four turns as well. So you can use it again. So. Definitely this one is going to be interesting as well because you're having a 325% damage to an enemy and then you're also getting the reduction in power if you're facing a pro hero, which if you're doing like the hard event, like let's say there because in the USJ, there's a hard all might stage. If you're playing that stage and you're using Shigaraki in case you're taking like massive, massive damage, you can then use Shigaraki action skill here and you can reduce that power, that attack power by 15% for three turns, which is going to come in handy, especially because again, USJ, you're going to think when you're fighting a hard enemy in the USJ, it's mostly going to be pro heroes, right? So definitely the villain team is probably going to be the way to go to probably beat USJ events because you're getting this power reduction. You're getting the medium chance to give fear. You're also getting 20% more power. If they're pro heroes, all of these are, if they're pro heroes, right? All of these others, like 
uh, afflictions and then increases, decreases for Shigaraki depends on if the enemy is a pro hero. So that is going to be really good for the USJ events again, because there are pro hero enemies there. And then again, plus ultra attack, you're getting that 20% power. The first action skill, you're getting that fear chance. And then the second action skill, giving that reduction in power by 15% for three turns. That's going to come in, definitely come in handy for the USJ. If you can put, pair them up with other, other uh, villains. Again, we got to see what other villains can do. There weren't too many villains actually in the closed beta. We had Shigaraki and Toga. I think those were the only two villains in the beta that were actually villains that I can think of off the top of my head. There may be one more. No. But yeah, no. I think there, I don't think, yeah, I think we only had these two, it's T T Toga and Shigaraki. There's only two, two villains. So we didn't really get many villains to really play all around with to kind of test out this kind of like uh, ability. But his auto skill, this is why he's going to be a good uh, villain person to have on your team, right? So his auto skill, which is a passive, increases the power of villain union character allies by 25%. So villain union or villain villain union leader, right? Probably makes sense. It's like League of, it's probably the League of Villains, right? That's basically what that is saying. And uh, if you have a character that is a part of the villain league or the villain union, League of Villains, whatever you want to call it, right? That character is going to get that power increase of 25%. I don't know if this gives it to himself. I imagine that it does. Again, I didn't get to play with Tomura to know if this does give him this power boost uh, because I didn't pull him in the beta. But again, my thought is yes, because technically he is a part of the League of Villains. So he would basically give this buff to himself. And then also, if your other allies are a part of the League of Villains, like say Toga, who was a part of the closed beta test, then Toga would get this boost of 25%, giving her a little bit more power. Then let's say Muscular, if Muscular, obviously the version of Muscular that we saw was the League of Villains when he got recruited. So technically, yes, he would probably get this power increase. And if Muscular already has insane stat boost, even as an SR, Shigaraki is now buffing him even further with that 25%. And then you have someone like, I, I don't think, st maybe Stain would not be a part of this, but let's say you have someone like uh, uh, Kur uh, Kurogiri and stuff like that on the team, right? Then you're getting all of these buffs for all of your teammates. And it's... <laughs> Man, that's going to be insane. Plus, coupled with the memories, like let's say you get the memories, which also increases your HP, power, and speed and stuff. And then also has other effects as well, I believe. But, you know, with memories also included, man, if you get that extra power from the memory, then you're give, buffing your character by 25%. Man. Uh, he's, again, this is going to be an ideal character if you're running a villain-esque team. So if you're a person that wants to summon for villains and your favorite like aspect of my hero are the villains part. Definitely Shigaraki is a must have unit, at least for one of the very first here, uh, villain characters. He's going to be a must have character because of that power boost that he gives villains. Uh, and definitely we get a lot of league of villain characters. He is going to be the staple on that team probably for a while. I can guarantee it. And Shigaraki right now, I would say he's very high a tier to low S tier because he is still really good. Again, he his buffs work off of villains right so this buff buffs villains so running him on a hero team is probably not going to be ideal at least to get his auto skill um then you also uh, the enemies don't really matter too much as long as the enemies are pro heroes you're getting all of these uh, the reason i say high a tier is again because of this if enemy is a pro hero right so if the enemy is not a pro hero, you're not getting this chance of fear. You're not getting this 20%. You're not getting this reduction of power. You're just kind of standard 325, 325, 600, which is not too bad, but it's again, pretty standard for a UR. This isn't like super high dealt damage. This is again, pretty, pretty basic for a UR so far that I've seen at least from the beta. But again, if you're not facing pro heroes, Shigaraki's pretty he's good but he's not really that great because he, if you're not facing pro heroes but if you are facing pro heroes definitely s i think s tier if you're facing pro heroes a tier if you're not facing pro heroes it really just depends he's a circumstantial kind of character so it really depends if you're running that villain team and if you're also facing pro hero enemies if you're not doing this and you're not facing pro heroes shigaraki's kind of all right he's not really like needed too much but again time will tell and i will do a lot of tests with him i will do showcases and everything with shigaraki to show off how he actually performs 
when facing a villain team, when facing hero enemies, when using them on a villain team, when using them on a hero team with different heroes and stuff. So I will be showing them off in different circumstances and stuff like that when the game does drop. So we'll look forward to that. What do you guys think of Shigaraki in My Hero Academia Ultra Impact? Do you think, you know, do you agree with me that he's kind of mad depending on the conditions? Do you think he's pretty good? Again, dependent on the conditions. Uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions on his kit and his animation and his plus ultra stuff. Let me know all of that stuff in the comments down below. Drop a like down below if you guys are excited for Tomura Shigaraki to come to My Hero Academia Ultra Impact. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Click that bell, turn on notifications if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic day.